Hello everybody and welcome to MAP Hangers in Revit Project webinar by EJ Cad. My name is Alex, I'm the presenter today. Some words about EJ Cad. We create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of the world's leading BIM practitioners. Our main task is to eliminate tasks that do not create value for our customers. As a company, we've developed the widest range of TrueBIM software in the world of Revit professionals, uh, covering uh, wood framing, metal framing, uh, such as precast concrete design, and MAP system design, as well as some other smaller tools. And today I will talk about MAP Hangers tool, as well as I'll mention SortMark tool and how it can help to extract coordinates from hangers. And what we'll cover in this webinar will be placing hangers on MEP elements in Revit, connecting those hangers to structural elements in a link model, and a few of those to the elements in the same model, splitting MEP elements into preset lengths. I think I didn't show that in the last webinar with conduits. Today I will show it, as well as auto-copying shared parameters from structural and MAP elements into hangers. At the end of the webinar, we'll end up with an MAP model with hangers placed on all line-based MAP elements, connecting them to different structural elements, such as walls, roofs, floors, columns in the link project, according to our predefined rules. And hangers will have the parameters needed for scheduling and additional information added, such as their coordinates in the project for drilling automation. And the last small topic will be the, our last addition, last feature in MAP hangers. It's placement of fabrication hangers on fabrication, ductwork, and pipework. Now it's also possible with our MAP hangers tool. And I'll go to my demo. I will start with our MAP Hanger sample project and some words about our Tools for BIM doc. Everything begins with Tools from BIM doc. I will show at the end of the webinar how you can download it and install it. Uh, there's a YouTube guide and a lot of written guides how to do that. It's pretty simple. Once you install it, it'll appear on your toolbar here. You just click to show doc and you will see menu like this in Revit 2020, a little bit different in 2019 version. And all our Autodesk Revit add-ons and BIM solutions are placed in this doc. And it's it works just like a window, like a project browser or properties window. You can drag it all over your screen. And how it works is just a license manager where you can choose any of our tools, click on it, and if I click, I already have these tools. I don't need to install them, but for those who are trialing our tools, you will have here on the bottom small window where you can enter your email and ask for the trial key, and you will get 14-day uh, full version free trial to test out our tools. Once you install it, they'll appear just on my tools. And today I'll talk, like I said, about MAP hangers. It comes together with a sort mark tool, which is very useful overall in project. Uh, but I'll show today how to use it in and with MAP hangers. And by clicking here, you will get all the comments for MAP hangers tool. From here, you can control all of it, or you can click on this small icon, and MAP hangers will be added to your toolbar as well from where you can drag it to your screen and it'll be just a little bit easier to access it than from the dock and then you can close the dock. And by pressing on this question mark, you will be directed to our EJCAD webpage from where you can check the getting started video uh, to start easier with MAP hangers. Uh, everything will be explained there as well as uh, you can hear here you can download our sample projects for metric or imperial versions. So it's that information. And now I can close the Tilsubim doc. 
With our MIPI hangers, everything begins, of course, with configurations. When you install the tool, you will not have any configurations saved on your computer and no hanger families. To get hanger families in those configurations, you need to download our sample project. And it's this one which is open for me right now. Here are placed different hangers and different situations. For example, for rectangular ducts, round ducts, ice conduits, cable trays. And while connecting them to the floors, roofs, uh, structural framing elements from floors when ducts are above the floor, vertical connections to the wall, to uh, columns, to framing elements in the wall, as well as when ducts are rising or pipes or other elements are rising vertically close to the wall, you can put clamps or create your own families. And there is an example of how our split function works. It basically creates from Revit elements uh, some sort of fabrication elements and divides them into certain lengths. And some examples how to manage multi hangers with our tool. And I just want to mention that this project is not hanger library per se. Uh, we've created some hangers. Uh, they are free to use. You can modify them as you wish. You can add your own here uh, or modify all of the hangers you already used to, for them to work with our tool. For that, you just need to add three or four parameters depending on the MIPI element. Uh, but from here, you will get uh, the basic set of hangers, which will definitely work with our tool. So the first steps with the tool itself is to save configuration file location and template file location. Configuration file location is where on your computer or server or some shared location the rules will be saved with which you place hangers. I just read it, it takes some time to open a small window. So you can have different paths, or maybe for different projects, or save different types of configurations in different folders. That's up to you. So after you save configurations, they'll be saved there. And template file location, after you download it from our page, just show the path where you saved it. So our tool will know that when hangers are needed, it will copy them from this project to the project in which you will be working according to the rules pre-saved. Also here you can there are some functions to replace IFC ducts and pipes and make from them real Revit ducts and pipes to put them later hangers on those. I will not go deep into that today. So the rules that I'm speaking about, how to open them. When you just open this sample project, you will see, like I said, different situations. So first step would be to find the situation which you would want to replicate in your project. For example, rectangular ductwork connecting to the floor when duct is under the floor. You just click on the MEP element and click on modify elements. That will open our configurations with which hangers were placed there. I will unclick this. Here on the left, you will see different placement options for hangers. All our hangers are created such that they are placed on top or bottom faces of any elements, but also you can distribute the put elements on any elements based on their end faces or side faces. That will already depend on how you create your own family or how you modify ours. And when you use some of these rules, they'll be lit in green, so you would know which ones are used on this element. And just the first usual mistake that happens, people make some changes in rules under the side face, while actually the hangers were placed on a top bottom face, so just to keep track of it. And the easy way to do that is click here to unmute, uh, hide and use tree nodes, and you'll be left only with the tree node with which hangers were placed. So you can have different detail priorities. That means that you can set different rules how hangers will be placed. You can filter out that one rule will be applied to ducts of diameter 400 or, and more, 
and second rule will apply to ducts of danger 400 and less uh, or for ducts of certain length. Uh, you can put different hangers uh, connect to different elements. All of that can be described on these rules. But this one is pretty simple, just connecting to the floor. And I'll go over explanation of how these rules work. So on top left, win top left window, you choose which kind of hanger will be applied to the ductwork. All our hangers are saved under structural connection families. You can create a structural connections category of families. You can create with your other category, for example, mechanical equipment, and our tool will still recognize it and show for you that it's possible to place those. And after I open structural connections in this project, our tool sees that under those structural connections, there are these families loaded and allows us to choose from the hangers uh, that are loaded in the project. And we choose the one we want. In this case, rectangular duct hanger, and the picture is here. The next important thing is we need to place tick here to insert details. Well, it's not placed, the tail priority is in yellow. That means that nothing will be placed. So we're going to take here, it's in yellow. And I know that this hanger is created in such a way that it is placed on the top face of the duct. So that's what I choose to place it on the top face of the duct. I can choose bottom or top and bottom. So these only, these rules apply about to the hangers themselves, which one will be applied. The next window, uh, top right, you can choose here to which structural element our hangers will be connected. You can filter with different uh, rules. The first rule class is how it should be connected where it should search for structural elements is top and bottom from the duct in this case. Left, right, uh, top and bottom connections, uh, virtual intersections, uh, it's when you're connecting to some element which doesn't have area, for example, structural framing, it has its line-based element. So you just need structural intersection between line of the ductwork and line of the structural framing and hangers will be placed on, on that intersection. So now we have floor, so it's just top and bottom connected to, to the area. Search in the project, we can choose to connect in current or a linked project or to search for structural elements in both. Then searching category, to what exactly do we search? Uh, floors, maybe roofs, maybe some other elements. And for the ease, you can use all the types of the floors which are in the project but maybe you have some specific needs that you need to connect to a very specific floor or the element, then you can choose specific family or the type of the element to which you want to connect. If this filtering is not enough for you, you need to connect to specific lengths of the element, you can add additional filters. And here you will see different parameters from the floors in this case, as we've chosen floors here. So here you choose to which structural element and how uh, hangers will be connected. And bottom left corner, you choose how those hangers will be placed on MAP elements themselves. So you can choose start offset and offset, uh, maybe some minimum length, maximum length of the pipe for which this specific rule will be applied. And then choose how hangers will be placed. Starting from the center, maybe you just want one hanger in the center or start end or from the end of the ductwork. That's your choice. Choose maximal spacing, each 2.5 meters. And that's what works. So after you check these rules, they are good for you. You can click save and that will save those rules on your computer and you can use them on any of your projects. So clicking this button. I'll close these rules. I will not go deep in this project. I'll go just to my another testing project, Hangar, where I have different systems. We have pipe work, duct work, cable trays, and conduits. And first one, I'll open the pipes. As you can see in red, around the perimeter of this room goes the pipe work. 
and I already have saved uh, rules on my computer. So I can just, with a tab, choose all the system at once. And let's say I want to connect to the columns in this linked project. So all I need to do after I save those rules is click on Insert Elements. And our tool will automatically try to find which kind of element it is. So it found uh, its pipes. And here we'll have all the rules that we've saved. So maybe I want to connect to the all the columns in this project. Clicking on Insert Details, our tool will go according to the rules, find all the intersections with columns. It will show that not all pipes were connected. For example, this small piece of the pipe is somewhere in this list. It was not connected. But all the other pipes will be connected with these hangers to the structural columns. And that's all around the perimeter. Also, I have some columns just to show in this project. Some metal columns, a concrete column, wooden column. To this wooden column, the distance was short enough to connect from both edges. And that's how the connections would look like. And for example, this pipe was left unconnected to the column because the search distance was too far. So our tool ignored it. And we can connect it to the other element, for example, roof, which is sloped in this case. So I do connection to the roof, top and bottom. And our tool found that in that rule, these hangers were described and they were searching for the roof to connect to. And as you see, the roof is sloped, so every hanger has per meter distance to deck. Here it's one, almost 1.1 meter, and at the end it's 1.9 meter. So we just elongate every single rod according to the elevation of the element. Same would work with Unistrut hangers or any others. And here we're talking about one of the parameters which is important to our tool, and it's under constraints, distance to deck. It has to be in your hanger family. Our tool writes here distance from an EP element to the structural element to which we want to connect. And later this number is used in calculations of, uh, it's written into the rod to elongate it to the needed length, and maybe it's used somewhere else. It's a, up to you where to use it, or maybe you need it in the schedule somewhere. Also, with our hangers, it's possible to copy different parameters from structural elements and from MEP elements to the hangers themselves. That can be done uh, to copy from structural elements under the construction category in the hangers. If you create a parameter with a double hashtag and write the same name as in the structural element, for example, slope. It has to be of the same parameter category as in this roof. So it's not an angle parameter, it's not length parameter, it's a slope parameter, slope category. Well, it's named slope and has category of slope. And our tool copied that the slope is 3%. You can copy any other information as long as parameters match category. It's under double hashtag under the construction. And to copy any parameter from MAP element, you can go to model properties category. And under this category, create with a single hashtag name of the parameter. It has to be the same category as in the pipe. So for example, this pipe goes with 0.005% slope. And that's what our tool reports. And you can copy here different parameters such as uh, system name, system type. Diameters, maybe length of the specific pipe, or anything else what is inside of the pipe itself. So that how that's how it works. And I'll go now to the ducts. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, you just want to remind that feel free to ask them in the question tab. And on the ducts, I want to show how elements will be connected to the structural framing elements. As you can see, there's structural framing here. So on the pipe, I'll just quickly show how it will work 
when connecting to the structural framing. Here we cannot write down that we want to connect every 2.5 or every 3 meters or let's say 6 feet or 9 feet. It'll just connect at every place where it finds structural framing elements unless we have added some additional filters, for example, for the length of structural framing and something else. So round ducts. And let's say I will use round to structural. I think it's round to structural framing. You can click on edit rules just to see what will be applied. So this, this hanger connecting to structural framing. Oh, that fits me. And I can click on insert elements. And the search distance is set to, I think, 1.2 meter. And that's what you will see here. It was added at every intersection with structural framing elements. Okay. Here and here, nothing was added because distance from the pipe here to the structural framing was longer than 1.2 meters. Yeah, so while doing that, I can show how our tool will adapt to changes. Maybe I'll change the meter of this duct to 150. It's way smaller now. I hope there will be enough distance to the structural framing element. And hankers do not update automatically, but all what you need to do is click on update elements, and hangers will become well, now it's not enough distance. Uh, well, I will quickly apply another rule, connect everything to the roof just to show how diameters change. Now it's like with this, this duct. There's not enough distance. Connecting to the top and bottom roof, maximum spacing. And well, I have created some a little bit custom rules. So with this rule, anchors should be placed every 2.5 meters, unless duct is like this one, shorter than six meters. In that case, anchor should be placed only in the center of the duct. And by clicking Insert, our tool will work with all the ducts. It found 18 elements for which hangers can be applied. Well, 17. And that's what we see. In addition to the rules which we already, with which we already placed hangers, now we have hangers connecting to the roof of our structure. Well, now I can change to Let's say 200, update elements. And the size just increased. Also, this will happen if you maybe delete some hangers on accident and you want to restore them again. Click on update elements and all the hangers will be just reapplied. Well, I get that mistake for this. There is not enough left to connect to structural frame. Also, if you move the pipe, uh, basically when you click on update elements, what our tool does, it just recalculates everything, all the rules, and reapplies them, and sees if, it, if calculations match the actual situation. If they do not match, the hangers will be placed at the correct places. So if the structural element would be moved, or MVP element is moved, update elements, and everything is updated. Now we have just not so much time left. I'll jump to cable trace. Here we can see those hangers from ducts. Visibility for ducts is turned off here. I'll just delete those. So with cable trace, it works exactly, exactly the same. I can choose these two elements and maybe let's say I want to connect to the columns. So that will be for cable trace. Our tool, like I said, automatically tries to find which category of the element it is. If it mismatches, you can change by hand. And let's say I want to connect to left and right, structural column. And I highlighted those hangers in red. They are connected to the columns. As well, maybe we want to connect to structural framing. In this case, we have a little bit more, a uh, few more choices. I have different types of 
structural uh, framing beams. There is a square beam and Z gauge Z. And the difference between blue and white gauge Z is that blue one is very long. It goes along all the anger. And this one is kind of short. So to begin with, I will just put hangers on all of these framing. Quickly check the rules, connecting to structural framing, and all is okay. What will this rule will do? It will place hangers on any structural framing element it finds. But later we can control uh, how our tool will do that. And then it takes some time to generate. Well, as you see, it connected hangers to all the structural framing. But maybe we don't want to connect to like gauge sets and only want to connect to the square beams. We can do that either by deleting hangers on the real elements and inserting again, or we can modify rules for already placed elements. So for structural framing, I will say that I want to connect only to the square structural elements, structural framing. And that's what we see. Only hangers and this place to our left. And for the latter, maybe I want to connect only to the specific uh, project. Light gauge Z. As you see, cut length for it is almost 24 meters. And for this one, length is 5.8 meters. So maybe I want to connect only to the longer one. We can easily do that by applying some additional filters. Structural framing, I'll add additional filter by the parameter cut length. Cut length is, for example, is greater than 7 meters. Clicking on update. And only hangers on these Zs are left. Similar would work if we put cut length is less than 7 meters, then hangers will be connected only to these beams. And that would be it. So I showed here a connection to the structural framing and structural columns. We as well can connect to the roof or you know, floor stands are not viable here, but it's also possible. And I'll go to, well, again, these are visible. I didn't turn off. But we have here conduits. And as you know, for fabrication parts, uh, there is no way to uh, do the conduits with fabrication parts. So with our tool, it's possible to split conduits into specific uh, lengths. I'll click on Insert Elements. And what we'll need to do is not place hangers, but place couplings in these pipe elements. And as you see, I have already selected this rule, Conduit Split. Uh, I will show how it looks like. It will be not under placement elements on the MEP element, but split function. And under split, I said that I want to put conduit fittings, coupling, coupling standard. Uh, for these cutting, you can create your own very thin coupling. Um, this is the standard, standard size. And that thick, thin coupling will basically allow you more precision in cutting. And I said that I want to cut conduit every one meter, thick spacing. And if I click Insert Details, that's what our tool will do. It just calculated all the conduit and split it into one meter lens. I just want to note why I said that coupling uh, thickness is important. As you see, this unit is one length, a one meter length. This one is already 946 because together with the coupling, it makes one meter. Coupling is 54 plus 946 equals 1 meter. So just keeping, keeping that in mind is pretty important. And well, I can also insert some hangers here just to have them. Uh, let's say top and bottom to the roof. And these hanger families can be also applied to the pipes.
just some uh, standard hangers. And as you see, our rods are equipped in such a way that we have connections. So one rod lamp is specific length, and if it's not enough, then other rod is added. So the last one I'll move to fabrication parts. I have here fabrication duct ductwork and one fabrication pipe. Uh, it's a little bit different working with fabrication elements uh, rather than regular rabbit elements. With regular rabbit elements, you had to save those rules from our sample project. For this one, you just need to have loaded fabrication parts in your project. And then what you need to do is click on insert elements. I already have fabrication pipes category created under my rules. And you will have red notification here that hangers are not described. So you just click on edit. And you will be able to choose from fabrication hangers category. No other categories available for now. And here you will have all the list of hangers which are already loaded with this fabrication part. So for example, for pipe, of course, I want to use pipe strut hanger. And all other rules are exactly the same. You can filter out how those hangers will be placed in fabrication element and how they will be connected uh, or to which uh, elements they will be connected. For example, roof, uh, some beams, or floor, wall. Well, wall is not possible with fabrication hangers. So I'll click on insert. And it just inserts with a specific distance again as with all other elements, but these are fabrication, MAP fabrication hangers, and this is MAP fabrication pipe work. And with the ductwork, I created two different widths of the duct just to show that filtering uh, works exactly the same as for regular Revit elements. I have created two rules. One rule places uh, hangers, rectangular flat, flat strap hanger for the ducts, which have main primary width 500, more or equal to 500. And the second rule, trapeze hangers for ducts, which are 500 or less in, in width. So clicking on insert details, uh, that's what we will see. Straps here and trapeze hanger here. Also with our tool, like I said, it's possible to copy different parameters or extract them from the Revit. And for now with MAP hang uh, fabrication hangers, we create, uh, made addition to our tool in such a way that now you will be able to see dimensions of this fabrication hanger, which is not possible with basic Revit functionality. You will have first rod land, second rod land. Well, right now they are the same because they are inserted at the same point. A unistrut land, and total land is all the land going around. So total land would be more useful for straps, as you need the length of the strap, and for Unistruct or trapeze hanger, you would need that unistruct length is 500 and rod lengths. Well, and that would be it from MAP hangers. And like I said, I will uh, go over our sample project a little bit just to show uh, some of the hangers that people asked for. For ducts, we have here a rectangular ducts, rectangular ducts, of course, unistrut hangers. And these unistrut hangers have rods which are parametric, each of them, so they can even have different lengths when the roof is sloped in this way. We have, uh, let's say, stands. It's possible to create even combinations of hangers. For example, here is a stand and unistrut hanger. support well for i'll go just quickly to the round ducts this support is with the hanger combined together again some supports for the floor 
hangers for pipes. These are uh, these loops, but these are just samples. And like I said, it's possible to apply, for example, let's say these Unistrut hangers to the pipes, make them use, be useful on the pipe. What would be needed to do is we have already distance to deck parameter. And the next important parameters are uh, under model properties for MEP elements. In this case, it's outside diameter, but it, it is created under the category of from conduits. It takes outside diameter from conduit. It can measure it so it can write down correct value and size the hanger correctly. If we would try to place this family on the pipe, it would not size correctly because outside emitter is of different category. You can search for those parameters, how they're created. There is a free add-in. It's called Revit Lookup. So if you click on Snoop Current Selection, you can find uh, what which parameters exist. So for example, for conduit, outside the meter. Uh, it's somewhere here. Yeah, parameter type, electrical conduit size. So of course it's not applicable to the pipes. For pipes it will be a little bit different category. And now I just want to show where you can get our tools for BIM doc. You just simply need to go to agacad. Dot com. You can write it with dash or without, you'll still get to our website. And here on the bottom, there are free trials. And you can click on Tools for BIM Doc. You'll get some overview, getting started videos, some short tutorials on if you'll need help to set it up. And on the last page, download, you can download Tools for BIM Doc for Revit 2020, 2019, or 18. And it comes together with a three free tools. Uh, just complementary. That's smart browser free, uh, cut opening free, and well, I always forget the last one. Smart select. Oh, and I'm I'm so sorry. While talking about the hangers and sizing, I forgot to show uh, the the sort mark tool, which I promised to show you for extraction of coordinates. I'll very quickly show it on the pipes since they have. Only 10 of these hangers here, if I remember correctly. Sort mark. It can calculate different values, uh, elevations, coordinations, enter different marks uh, according to your created rules. It has very wide implementation range. But let's say we want to calculate drilling points. And since these are just rods, and for x, y coordinates, we can uh size them for hold the rod at once it's still straight so x y will be the same so i will select all the instances in the project yes 10 rods as we have click on calculate coordinates our tool tells us ask us where we want to write down those coordinates i'll choose mark parameter calculate to the middle point according to shared coordinates and that's what we'll have under the mark parameter we have x and y values and it's possible to calculate and write down way more per, uh, information you just need to imagine it and our tool will do that so i think that would be it from my presentation you can get free trials of our tools for 40, 14 days free of charge and full functionality to test them out at home if you have any questions feel free to write us at support at ajcat.com or if you have any questions related to the tool itself my email is alexandras at ajcat.com and i we will be waiting for your emails thank you for joining in and have a nice day AGA CAD, building BIM together.